How do YouTube viewers and gear gadget fans everywhere across cyberspace? Thanks for tuning into the Watch Box review today. Got a fun, great review here of an affordable dive watch, and let's get right into it. This is the Android Dive Master Espionage. And I bought this watch a good year ago from shopnbc.com. It was around $100, and I think it's a great watch with a lot of really good features for not a whole lot of money, so I'm very happy with my purchase overall. But let's talk about the technical specs first and hammer those out of the way. So the overall lug end to lug end length from end to end is 55 and a half millimeters. The strap lug width is a 24 millimeter wide standard, and it uses a single spring bar at each end to secure the strap. The case width Overall, from the tip of the crown to the end of this uh, protruding detail feature here is 57 millimeters. The crown diameter is a 10 millimeter diameter crown, and it protrudes out of the side of the case by 6 millimeters tall. The case height is a 26 millimeter wide um, from, from the flat of the crystal to the case back. So it's a very tall case overall. It sits pretty high up off the wrist. The bezel diameter is a 49 millimeter diameter bezel from end to end and the crystal window opening on the front is 36 millimeters across. Okay, so let's take a look here at the strap. As I mentioned earlier, it's a standard 24 millimeter wide. It's a thick silicone strap. It tapers from about 4 millimeters thick, thick on down to about, one, about two and a half millimeters at the very end. At the very end and the overall it's got a shoulder drop down here to go from 24 down to 22 and it maintains a straight 22 from there on and it's the same with both ends and it's it's silicone so some things about silicone uh, number one it's pretty chemically inert uh, in that it doesn't react with like uh, skin sweat perspiration uh, sunblock things like that it's pretty inert um, by itself it doesn't absorb a whole lot of like odors or anything like that um, but it's also rigid and very stiff. It doesn't take a shape at all compared to like uh, polyurethane or different types of softer rubbers, which will actually mold and contour to your wrist shape, whereas silicone doesn't. It just remains ruler straight for as long as you own it. This watch is a year old, and the strap looks exactly the same as it did when it was brand new. So um, It's a dust magnet as well, so be careful about that. Um, fortunately for this particular watch, it's gray, and so... Um, whereas a black or a darker color would really show dust and dirt and things like that, but this one is still a dust magnet, so I kind of wipe it off a little bit every now and then. Here's the buckle, 20, 20 millimeters wide, uses a 20 mil, uh, 22 millimeter spring bar in there. The tang is a folded steel tang. Everything's done in brushed stainless with the Android logo laser etched. So I've left my camera light on in addition to the room lighting so you can really see the amount of scratches and things like that. So uh, again, this is a year old watch. I, I wear it and scratch it around a little bit. Um, bang it up pretty good on some doorknobs and things and I haven't had any problems with that aside from the cosmetic uh, blemishes that you're going to see around the watch. Okay, so let's take a look at the case back. Close look at the case back. It's a standard screw-in case back. And you see the Android logo in the middle, the model number there, and uh, the name and model number designated around the perimeter there. Um, together, that screw in case back with the screw in crown achieve 50 ATMs of water case pressure resistance. So it's not common to find a timepiece rated for 50 ATMs in this price range. So hats off to Android for really targeting uh, that performance specification uh, for a watch in this price range. Okay, so the finish all around the watch is brushed stainless. There's not a panel of polished stainless anywhere. So this is pretty much Android's, um, one of Android's renditions of like a dive tool or a dive timer or however you want to call that. So uh, very industrial sport kind of a look. There's really nothing flashy or prestigious, I guess, looking about it in, from a glitz and glamour type of uh, perspective. So. One little feature about it that I really like is, yes, it's a large watch, it's a big diameter, but the case lugs are really short. And for an average wrist size like my 7.5 wrist, um, it really, I think, helps the fit of the watch. So you don't have the, a huge watch, you know, overhanging the edges and the sides of your wrist because those case lugs are kept really short. And you can kind of see a little bevel there into the side of the case where the strap recesses just a little bit into the side of the case. 
So it also conceals that gap that you get on a lot of watches between the strap and the case lug in there. So it's a pretty tight fit overall. Really nice, really tight, snug fit overall. Um, let's see, Here's, let's take a look at the business end of the watch, and I apologize for my fingerprints, but the crystal that's used in this watch is nothing really expensive or elaborate, don't, it's not sapphire, I'm going to guess it's just a hardened type mineral crystal, um, but I haven't had any problems with scratching it, and I'm banging around pretty good, and for a year, hey, good, no complaints. Um, the dial itself is a gray, charcoal gray uh, sun ray dial with a wave laser etch uh, texture cut into it. Here, let me turn my camera light off. I hope that helps. There you go. With a the wave uh, laser etch wave graphic on it. I'm not a huge fan of highly decorated dials or perforated dials or anything like that. But that little wave texture, hey, it's nice. It gives it a little bit of style points. Gives it a sporty look and that kind of thing. Again, water. Again, water being the kind of general theme. So it's kind of nice, nice overall. Um, it's a deep dish stadium type uh, chapter ring that's in there, and it's got some nicely cut out uh, hour marker notches there going, going around the perimeter. So it really gives the watch uh, a sense of depth and heft, I think. Kind of wish the crystal were a little bit thicker. It would have been kind of cool if they took this crystal and dropped it uh, deeper down into the dial. Give it, again, I think another level, I think. It would have been more expensive, obviously. A thicker crystal is going to be more expensive, but I think it would have been kind of a cool effect. But It's pretty flat, flat crystal overall. No dome at all to the crystal, so it's really really nice looking overall. So I really like the dial uh, hand contrast in this watch, and that's why I kind of one of the things I kind of like about it, and one of the reasons why I chose it was a clear, easy reading dial, and it uses super luminova luminescent luminescence to highlight all the accents that are in there, the hands and the markers. And let's take a close look at the sweep second hand. There's your sweep second hand motion of the Siegel ST what is this 2806 it's a 20 this is a Siegel ST TY2806 automatic movement so there's your sweep second hand motion Siegels can be hit or miss when it comes to the sweep motion of their second hand some of them are stutter tend to stutter a little bit stammer and stutter a little bit whereas this one I got lucky super smooth it is a 21600 beat per hour on the balance wheel in there and really nice overall. Kind of wish there was a luminescent dot or a loom marker around that second hand, but hey, it's all right. No big deal. I'm not going to that's that's not really a deal breaker uh, in my book, so. Uh so a couple details about the Siegel TY2806. It is a Chinese automatic movement. Um it, it it uses a wind rotor inside there, inside the case, and it's a bi-directional winding rotor. So any type of rocking motion of that rotor is going to wind your mainspring and keep it wound. As opposed to like the Miyota 82 series movements that are unidirectional rotating in their um, wind rotors. Um, it's also a hacking automatic movement. So when you, unscrew, when you unscrew the crown, pull the crown for timing adjustments. you can stop the sweep motion of the second hand. So those of you who are really into timing and timing accuracy and timing synchronization, things like that, uh, this is a, a nice feature in this price range. And to re-engage that second hand, you simply push the crown back in, and there you can see it starting up again. And the crown mechanics overall are really nice, really smooth, Nice, tight, snug fitting, screw down crown. I really like screw locking down, screw lock crowns. Um, not so much for the added water resistance, but more for the security and safety. So you've got a crown threaded into the case of the watch and like drop and impact resistance. That shock and that load is not really translated into the stem of the watch going in there. So a nice job by Android overall. So again, Android chose a really good feature set uh, for the price range. I think they really maximized that uh, ratio a whole lot here. So uh, the bezel here is a unidirectional rotating dive bezel. And there's the glow-in-the-dark pip at the 12 or the 00. zero. Really nice big bubble of luminous, of super luminova in there. Really nicely done. Laser etched markers going around the perimeter to show your minutes and your first 15 minutes of rotation around that dial. 
So a really nice, smooth, buttery, smooth dive bezel. This is my tightest, snuggest fitting dive bezel. On par with my Seiko ISO 6425 divers, Android just nailed the mechanics of this bezel. They fit really snug, really tight. There's no rattle at all. I mean, no slop, no rattle or anything at all. It's just a wonderful feeling, rotating dive bezel. Um, let's see. The overall case shape has a lot of rounded contours. It's not an angular or jagged or sharp edge um, design at all. It's kind of like a jelly bean, I guess, so to speak, and it's 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 a nice, nice blend of some uh, flat panels, but mostly rounded, contoured surfaces overall. So this little detail over here, this is the helium release valve, and a lot of watch, dive, uh, really higher end dive watches have a helium release valve. So most of the time, however, they're exposed, whereas Android decided to conceal it underneath this little crown-looking cage. It looks like a crown, but it's really not. It's just a rigid ca uh, cage uh, that's on there. And to release the valve, you'd press in that center hole with like a paper clip, and you could activate the valve that way. That's a feature I would have absolutely no use for. Um, and again, in the year I've owned the watch, I've never care to poke around in there, but it is what it is, and it's kind of a cool looking little feature just to look at it. Gives the watch a sense of um, balance, I think, so to speak, where you're looking at it kind of this way, crown on one side, and a little feature over here on the other, so. So let's charge up the loom, and dim the lights a bit here, let me charge it up. You've seen this before, no big deal here. Loom charge, loom charge, loom charge, and all right, there we go. Dim the lights. Okay, there's your loom. Hands glow bright, super luminova. That bubble pip at the zero zero glows bright. And what's happening to the dial markers? The dial markers are fading. Oh no. Bummers. Big time bummers. I was so hoping this watch was going to blaze with Super Luminova on that dial, but they kind of missed it. I'm going to guess uh, it's a thin application uh, on those markers. I think they could have really, really bubbled those out and really um, blazed this watch through the night, but it is what it is. There you go. So, my, as you can see here, just in the short time of this video, you can see those loom markers are just rapidly fading. This is probably one of my dimmest loom marker watches of all my collection. But the hands are awesome. Awesome, awesome hands. They glow bright, they glow long. Take a look at that hour marking arrow, how distinctly visible it is, and how distinctly different it is from the minute hand. Awesome. Oh, there you go. There's the Android logo on the second hand. See that? Here's your sweep second hand, sweeping around. Awesome. And the pip is starting to dim a little bit too. So there's your pip. But if, if the dial markers glow, glowed half as bright and half as long as the hands, they would have it would have been great. But as it is, there you go. In fact, there you go. My 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 camera video is really not picking up the dial loom anymore, so. This is the gunmetal, uh, the gray dial, the gray dial version, and I'm on the Shop NBC website. There's the yellow. There you go. Here's the orange. My camera makes it look red, but trust me, it's orange. And here's the blue. In hindsight, I kind of wish I got this one. The blue is a, a really cool. The Android blue is a really bright, distinct, bold uh, blue color. I kind of wish I got that one, but eh, oh well. I chose the conservative charcoal or gunmetal or char charcoal type of gray no problems here so anyhow that is pretty much it so that's the Android Dive Master Espionage happy with my purchase enjoy wearing this watch I wear it all the time just a great great timepiece okay thanks a lot guys I will catch you later